is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Two Pop to Handle. I'm your host, Andrew Nucatola, your pop culture best friend. And as always, I hope you are having a fabulous week. I can confidently say that I am. It is 70 degrees and sunny in New York today, so I am living my best life. There is just something so like reviving about the like a, a 70 degree weather day after weeks and weeks of rain or like chilly weather. It was gorgeous today so i am in high spirit i also had my birthday over the weekend so spirits are high we are feeling good i am officially 29 i am in the last year of my 20s which is so crazy to think about i also need to just like give myself a pat on the back because i somehow managed to get through last week's episode without mentioning once that my birthday was coming up like that is not like me any of my friends listening you guys know that i like to make my birthday a whole ordeal and i definitely did but for me to not mention it on the podcast like that was big of me this is growing up i also didn't share every single instagram story that was tagged in wishing me a happy birthday of course i responded and thanked my friends and like i appreciate it so much but i was like is this growing up i was like i don't need to share every single story you know what i mean like i know i'm loved i don't need to brag and like throw it in people's faces that like people are tagging me in stories and celebrating me i'm so appreciative of it and like thank you to everybody who wished me a happy birthday but i was like is this growing up like is this getting older like i don't know i'm totally off center in my camera one second let's adjust there we go (laughs) um but yeah it was such a fabulous weekend so we unfortunately did not end up going to see olivia rodrigo she's going on stage for her fourth and final show in like an hour and clearly i'm not going because i'm here I could not get a single ticket for this show for less than $600, which I'm sorry, that is not, I'm not paying that to see Olivia Rodrigo. If you do, like, people who, more power to you, I am not, like, the people who were buying the the charity tickets that are getting released, which, can we talk about this for a second? Let's go on our first tangent of the show, two seconds in. What is this charity platinum Ticketmaster is doing now? Why can't they just sell tickets I will, like, I understand that with Charity Platinum, like, sure, the money's going to charity. That's great. If I wanted to donate to a charity, I would, I would, and I I do. Like, when there's a charity that I want to donate to, I donate to them. I don't want to donate to a charity, so I go to a concert. It was literally $600 for these tickets that I know that's not face value. Like, I, I know for a fact that it's not the face value price. That is, you just looking, like... Ticketmaster knows that we're all done with the platinum pricing, so instead they're just throwing on a charity thing. And of course, Olivia has a say in it too. And like the team, whatever. Like I know it's not just Ticketmaster, but like Ticketmaster is the root of all evil to us. You know what I mean? To us fangirls. So we just have to blame them. But did not get to see the Guts tour. That is okay. She does have shows in Philly in July that I was looking at. Maybe I don't know. I'm not gonna count my chickens before they hatch. I've said that so many times on the podcast, which is not as thing that I say a lot but the camera comes on and suddenly I have all of these like quirky little sayings I don't know I don't know what the microphone does to me (laughs) that being said I did not make it to the guts tour but I did make it to studio 29 which if you don't follow me on Instagram I turned my apartment into a club over the weekend for just some of my friends we it wasn't it wasn't like a big thing or anything I mean it was a big party like I put a lot into it but I didn't invite like tons and tons of people it was just a small little group of us and it was perfect 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 I had such a fabulous birthday thank you to all my friends I think I'm pretty sure everyone who was there listened to the podcast for the most part um if they don't all good (laughs) I don't expect my friends to listen to the podcast but when they do I'm like oh my god you guys listen like that's so nice um but we had such a fun time we yeah like I said I turned our apartment so literally like where I'm recording right now. This was uh, behind where the camera is. That was our photo op. Um, If you can see behind me, if you're watching the video, there is a new addition to the bar cart. It is a custom made disco ball Jose Cuervo bottle that my friend Brianna made for me. So shout out to you. I just have the best friends in the world. It was such a fabulous birthday. It was, it was perfect. We had so much fun. We did plan, (laughs) we did plan to go downtown and go hit the clubs, but, um, We pre-gamed a little too hard. Um, I ended up throwing up on, well, in a subway station trash can. Uh, We, which is a first for me, surprisingly enough. I've never done that. Um, So cross that off the list, but no regrets. I had such a fabulous time. (laughs) We, we, Thomas and I were saying, we well, funny enough, Thomas made it to the club. Thomas, Ashley, and Ashley's boyfriend, Abhishek, made it to the club. 
we all we got separated because they had to turn back for something so we attempted to go we could not figure it out really i couldn't figure it out because i'm the one from the city who like couldn't direct us so my bad there <laughs> i could not figure out what subway we had to take i was hot mess express messiana just drunk like there was no tomorrow but so be it it was my birthday i can do whatever i want but my friends are so great they all were like we literally could care less we had so much fun like it was such a fun night. We had a blast. So thank you to everybody who came out. Thank you to everybody who wished me a happy birthday. And now it is the road to 230, which is nuts. So crazy. But regardless, I had a fabulous birthday. And then on Sunday, obviously, I was a little hungover. I was honestly more tired than hungover, to be completely honest. Like, I definitely wasn't 100% in any aspect. But, like, I felt more tired than anything. So... We laid low, we hung out, we had breakfast, went for a walk. It was gorgeous on Sunday. And then I recorded a bonus episode of the podcast, which is out now. So if you haven't listened to it, go check it out. Me and my friend Gatti recorded a whole album analysis, track by track, breakdown of Cowboy Carter. She's a huge Beehive member. So I knew when I wanted to do that episode, I wanted her to do it with me because I wanted somebody who gets it, you know what I mean? Like I wanted somebody who would like totally understand my old callbacks of things and understand like the references the where she kind of calls back to old albums and like to Renaissance and things like that. So it was such a good episode. We had so much fun. It was like an hour and a half long. So it's definitely long, but I promise you it was worth the listen. Also, if you do listen to it, I apologize. The audio was a little funky. I used a new uh, like recording platform that I've never used before. Uh, it's not what I use when I record my usual episodes like I'm doing now and I couldn't listen to my audio with the way that my microphone is so I couldn't hear myself so it was like I didn't know what I sounded like until after I finished recording and I was like what the fuck is going on but it, it's listenable like it's not bad it's definitely not like the best quality but like we're making do I'm just a boy with a microphone in his living room trying to make fun content and I loved the episode I thought it was great I had so much fun Gatti had so many good just like bits and pieces and takes of the album we had so much fun just talking we had so many of the same thoughts we had some different thoughts that just like enhanced the conversation it was fabulous i absolutely loved it it's so fun to be able to dive into an album full-fledged with somebody who gets it um and i'm excited to kind of keep this series going as bigger albums come out so Next up, we will have Taylor Swift with my friend Delaney. That's going to be fun. We have actually stayed up until midnight for so many of Taylor's album releases. She lives in Indiana. I live in New York. So just like via text. But we would like listen to the album at midnight together. And if not at midnight, like the next morning, we would share our thoughts like song by song. So we're going to be just doing that on the podcast because we do it anyway. And that's kind of what inspired the idea for this series is kind of like separate episode kind of thing because I obviously can't do pop culture coverage and an album deep dive on one episode because we will be here for three hours and as much as i would love to sit here and record and talk for three hours about beyonce taylor swift whatever it may be i'm a one-man person like i'm a one-man show so to edit that and all you know the whole nine it just is not not gonna happen so i kind of like the idea to have them separate because we kind of get just some bonus content and it's just more things for me to create and like experiment with so definitely fun keep an eye out for that i'm aiming to get that out the week after that the album comes out so keep your eyes out obviously i'll be posting about it and also keep your eyes on my instagram the day of tortured poets department release day because i have a little a little something that i'm cooking up with one of my friends which is very exciting and of course i have been saying it for the past few weeks but if you're looking for a way to celebrate tortured poets department release fangirl fantasy my girl julie she is coming to new york the knitting factory actually their new location they were in brooklyn now they're in manhattan so i haven't been to this location yet but they are we are doing we what am i saying they are doing a tortured poets department release party this album title is such a tongue twister i need taylor swift to like go back to the one word titles because this is a lot but we she will be doing a release party that night at the knitting factory if you're in new york stop by it's going to be so much fun. I always love the Fangirl Fantasy events and a Taylor night's going to be a blast. So check it out. Get your tickets. Come hang. It's going to be a blast. But moving forward, if you guys haven't seen, I'm um, I'm kind of going like majorly viral on TikTok. Not to like, not to flex, but if you're not following me on TikTok, you're missing out because there's a lot going on. I posted a TikTok. It's always the content that's like, takes me no time. I was sitting on my couch 
decided to record a reaction to this uh, this audio that I heard that was just like funny and like uh, very just like niche and like like a I don't know just like a funny song that I heard um and it went crazy viral I it was at like 14 million views before I started recording and it is still going I'm like it's going nuts it is crazy so if you haven't seen that go check it out go read the comments because the Jesus freaks are going in on me and it's kind of funny because I I, like, I, I'm like i not going to get into religion on this, but it's just funny to read their comments because they're like, you shouldn't judge, da 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 And I'm like, you're judging me by commenting on my video and like saying I shouldn't do it. So like, I don't know. It's just funny how people will point fingers at somebody when they're doing the exact same thing. It's like you're looking in a mirror, girl. But go check that out. It's just very funny. And it's, yeah, I'm like, we love a viral moment. How fun. Of course, it's on a video that I spent no time on, but I'll take it. I will take the views. I'll take the followers. I'll take the engagement. I don't care what it's on. <laughs> um, and that being said, let's hop into some music news because I didn't realize how much music we were getting last week and how much music we're getting this week. There's a lot. To, there's a lot to discuss. So let's hop in. If you're new here, I start every show with my Drew releases segment, which is my play on new releases. My name's Andrew. Drew rhymes with new releases. You see what I'm doing, you know, simple math. So we always start with last week's releases, kind of what I thought of those, and then what's coming up this week. So first on the list, we have a Megan and Glorilla wannabe. You guys know I love Megan Thee Stallion. She's just, she's so fun. She is the it girl. The pictures of her at that basketball game she went to over the weekend, she is out of control. She is genuinely one of the most stunning people I've ever seen in my life. I'm obsessed with her. But the track is so much fun. I'm they're touring together this year, so I don't have tickets yet, but I will be there. Um, and I'm sure they're gonna perform it. It's just so fun, just like a good fun vibe. The girls are loving it on TikTok. They are throwing ass, <laughs> throwing it back. Megan is living for it. It's so funny, and I just love seeing people just like, even when it's a like a silly trend. Like I love that TikTok kind of gives us that community sense. Now you know we're able to like all come together and do like a fun trend. I mean, I'm not. I'm not shaking my ass on TikTok the way these girls are, but I will applaud them all because, girl, if you got it, flaunt it. <laughs> but loving wannabe from Megan and Glorilla. Next up, we had Omar Apollo, Spite. Now, he's been teasing this song for so long, and the fact that we finally got it, thank God, and I'm loving it. It just is such, like, a perfect easing into summer. Like, it's just, like, a vibey, fun track. I, I love his voice. He had, not, like, a unique voice, but just, like, his, his the music he makes fits his voice so well that it just is like a such a nice listening experience i don't know if that makes sense but loving our new omar track very good if you haven't checked it out make sure you check that out the next one on my list i'm gonna be completely honest i didn't listen to at all i <laughs> i was having a hard time honestly listening to a lot of new music because i'm still digesting cowboy carter but doja cat scarlet too I, I just didn't get around to it. I don't know if I will get around to it. It hasn't really made much waves, anything that I've seen. I don't know if there's anything crazy. I'll probably listen to it eventually, but not top of my list. I got, there's so much else to listen to and so much else to digest right now. I'm like, I, I've got to, I've got to get my chickens in a row. My ducks in a row, what's the saying? I don't know. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Doja. Not that you're ever going to listen to this, but I did not listen to the album yet. We'll see when I get to it. But this next track, I cannot stop listening to. I am obsessed with it. So is the internet. Chaperone, Good Luck Babe, the first single from this new era that we are allegedly getting. Uh, I mean, I feel like she's still kind of going through the album cycle with her debut album, which I just can't get enough of. You guys know it was in my top five of last year's releases. Like, I'm obsessed with that album, The Rise and Fall of the Midwest Princess. If you haven't listened to it yet, you need to jump on this train. She, we are, we are really watching something so special with Chapel Roan. Like, I feel like she is about to blow up and just become like the next big pop star and get on board. I have to give credit or credit to do. My friend Jocelyn did give me, you know, the heads up on her when her album came out. It was like, you're going to love her. So I had to check her out and I cannot get enough. She has been in my rotation every single day. I at least listen to like two to three songs. I'm obsessed. And this song, Good Luck Babe, no. Like, it is out of control. So good. I just, I love her voice. I love her sound. I love everything about her. She is so good. So definitely go check that out. It is a front runner in my new releases of the year. I am obsessed with it. So, so good. 
Next up is another album. We had Tori Kelly dropped Tori, her self-titled album. Loving this sound. It is so good. I, I, I will be honest, I only listened to it like two or three times fully through and I haven't really digested it as like a whole project yet. But just from like my first few listens, absolutely loving it. She just, her voice, ugh, she's so talented. So, I just love her. I do have to say I'm a little disappointed because she is coming to New York and she's performing at Terminal 5, which if you know, you know, Terminal 5 is hell on earth. It is the worst concert venue anybody can perform at. And I am just like, come on. Like Tori Kelly's, she's not like, she can perform somewhere else. I feel like, like she can do a bigger venue. I just, I don't know. I Thomas and I are on the fence on if we're going or not to see Tori at Terminal 5. So I guess we'll see. But I'm loving the album. So I'm sure I'll end up there and I'll just like suck it up and do it. But I really try to avoid that venue at all costs. That being said, our next release, <laughs> um, Charlie XCX released two singles from her upcoming album, Brad, which I'm so excited for. It's coming out in June. Cannot wait. She released Club Classics, B2B, just two club classics. That's like the best way to put it. They are so dancey. So like, just like, I, I just want to be at a club listening to them. I When they got, when they, they came out on Wednesday of last week. So the day I released the episode and I was like, these coming out the week of my birthday, they're going to be playing them at every gay bar this weekend. I can't wait. And then I didn't make it to the gay bars on my birthday, but it's fine. We still had a blast. I am loving these tracks. The, just the sound is so fun. It makes me want to dance. They're following Von Dutch's footsteps as if they just sound like a gay club. They are so much fun. I cannot wait for this album. I cannot wait to see her in June. It's going to be a blast. So I'm loving these releases from Charlie. And then we got a release from Beyonce. Nothing new, nothing... Cr I mean, it's new, but it's not new. It was the Texas Hold On Pony Up remix. I'm loving it. I'm obsessed. Such a fun, fun twist on the song. It just adds like a new life to it, which is, again, what Beyonce does best is like taking a song and making it her own. And even when it's her own song, she's able to spin it in a way that's just like completely new. She did it with the Break My Soul Queens remix, the Cuff It remix. Like she, when she does a remix, she does it 200%. And this is no exception. I'm loving this remix. It's so much fun. Just, just a fun release. I wasn't expecting it. Didn't know where it came from, but that's the thing with Beyonce. You just never know what she's going to do. You never know. She moves in silence, you know, like you never know what we're going to get. So I guess we'll see what's next in the Cowboy Carter era. Still obsessed, still loving, and I cannot get enough. And like I said, make sure you go listen to that episode that I put out on Monday because it was so much fun. And I think it will really give a lot of people more insight to the album because we really do break it down like track by track, message by message. We like, oh, I don't know what I just dropped, but I dropped something. <laughs> She just does such a good job at like, I don't know, just listen to the episode. Just take my word for it. I don't want to, I'm not going to plug in anymore, but it was such a fun episode and I'm really proud of it. So I would love it if you guys would go check that out. And that wraps up our releases from last week, which means we have some upcoming ones and we have some really, really, really exciting releases this week. I am actually like 10 out of 10 stoked for every single one, all five of these. First and foremost, Sabrina Carpenter. She is releasing a new single called Espresso, which she said she wanted to give us something special before her Coachella performance, which I'm so excited that Coachella is this weekend. I'm definitely, I feel like there's not as much of a hype around it this year. It's definitely kind of died down. I mean, ticket sales alone were like, not great. Usually the weekend one at least sells out immediately and they had tickets for a while. I don't know. I think it's just expensive. Like it's a lot of money to go to these festivals. And I think people are just like, I don't know. I, there's a whole, there's a whole another episode I can go into about like festival culture and the pricing and things like that. And like the hype of it. But I am very excited for Coachella this weekend just to see everyone's performances. We got some big names in the lineup. Lana Del Rey. We have Renee Rapp, Sabrina Carpenter, Chapel Roan, Chloe. Who, ugh, so many, just so many people. So it's going to be, it'll be exciting to see like what happens. I will say I'm not like staying up for any live performances. I don't think it's not like, it's not like a Beyonce year or Ariana Grande year. Like I, if I happen to catch anything live, I'll watch it, but I'm not like perched at my couch like I usually am for a Coachella performance. But new Sabrina this weekend, it actually comes out on Thursday. So excited for that. Another Coachella performance that we have is Chloe, Chloe Bailey. She's releasing Boy Bye this weekend. So excited for that track. And we are getting the third single from Dua Lipa's upcoming album, Radical Optimism, Illusion, this week. And there's a music video she's teasing for it. The clip alone, I mean, it sounds like a smash. 
she she can't release a bad song like Dua Lipa is incapable of dropping a bad song and the song is even out yet and I'm already claiming that Illusion is going to be another hit I'm just obsessed I'm so excited for this album she just doesn't miss she's one of my faves and Ugh, I cannot wait for this album comes out in May. And then we have two albums on the horizon this weekend. Girl in Red, I'm Doing It Again, Baby, and Maggie Rogers, Don't Forget Me, which I've been talking about both of these albums for weeks, for months. You guys already know the drill. I'm loving everything we've gotten from these albums thus far, and I am so so excited to finally get the full bodies of work. So that is this weekend. We have so much coming up. We are going into spring, summer season, and just like, I'm so excited. There's going to be so much music coming out, so much so much to talk about and yeah those are your releases so if you don't know i update my drew releases playlist every week you can find it on spotify and apple music uh or if you go to the link in my bio on instagram it is there and i add all the new releases that i talk about and then by the week after i delete the ones that i didn't like from it so that way you can kind of like listen to them with me through the week and then by the week after you know which ones i liked and which i didn't like so go check that out and those are our releases for the week which means it's time to hop into some pop culture topics and there are there's plenty full <laughs> let's just leave it at that um staying on some music news billy eilish has announced that her new album hit me hard and soft is dropping may 17th very excited for that i love all of billy's past projects so i'm really really excited to see what this sound is like. She doesn't really venture too far off of her path. She kind of, she always, I mean, she, I guess that's a lie. She did experiment a little bit with Happier Than Ever. There's some different sounds on it. Um, but regardless, she just, she's so thoughtful with her music and her lyrics and her production and her and Phineas just do such a great job of putting bodies of work together. Like they, that's, she's an artist who releases albums, not just singles, which leads me to the next point that there's going to be no singles from this album, which I have such a love-hate relationship with. Singles to an album are like that first taste of them, you know? It's like, they're usually the lead single is like the one that the artist really wants us to either, it either gives us the full idea of the album, or if you're Ariana Grande, it throws us off completely on what the album's gonna sound like. So it's just a fun, I always like to look back when the album's fully out and be like, okay, this was the lead single, why? And kind of dissect it there, like, I guess that I wasn't going to plug it again, but Gatti and I were saying on the Beyonce episode on Monday that her re Beyonce releasing Texas Hold'em in 16 Carriages was such a smart idea because Texas Hold'em gave that country taste, but then 16 Carriages said like, hey, it's going to be country, but it's going to cover like serious things. You know what I mean? Like it's still going to give us that like deep rooted messaging through it. So I always love to look back and see like why they somebody released the lead single that they did versus like when the album comes out. But Billy is doing no singles. She wants this to be released as a full body of work, which I do respect. I do, I, and I think for some artists, like Taylor Swift, I don't think she's doing a lead single for Tortured Poets, but like she didn't for Midnight's either. And like, she is another artist who does like a body of work, you know what I mean? So it, all the songs make sense together. So to give us a like a sneak peek of a song might like take away from the album, the listening experience. So definitely a double-edged sword there, but Billy is doing no singles and she is saying, fuck Rolling Stone. Allegedly, they leaked her track list. I don't really know what went down and how the track list was leaked. I did think her posting on her Instagram story and saying, fuck Rolling Stone was a little aggressive. I was like, that's, that's like a lot. They're, they're a huge, huge, they're like the music publication. And you just did that interview with them where you talked about all the vinyl things and like that was making waves. So like just like a weird take. If you ask me, I don't know, but I I, I can't. She just already posted it. Like, I, I don't know. My opinion doesn't really matter in that sense because it's already up. But on the topic of her Instagram stories, whoever on Billie Eilish's marketing team thought about the close friends tactic, Jean, yes. Genius. Genius, genius. I hope you got a 300% raise for that because it is one of the best album marketing tactics I have seen in years. It was so smart. Everybody instantly, when they saw that green ring about, when they saw that green ring around Billie Eilish's profile and they were like, I'm on Billie's close friends, my entire timeline was blowing up on Twitter. Like, it was so smart. She gained over 10 million followers in a week. Just genius. So smart. I, I, I'm i obsessed. As somebody who works in marketing and just loves music promotion and music 
anything related to it. I'm obsessed. It was so smart. And I, I feel like we're honestly probably going to see a lot of other artists taking this tactic because it was so effective. I mean, 10 million followers in a week. That is such a crazy growth rate. Like, that is so many people. And honestly, surprising that there were 10 million people who didn't follow Billie Eilish before that. Like, she already had 112 or something million followers. So, like, to just keep that number going, literally insane. So, kudos to whoever on Billie's team thought of that because I think that is one of the smartest marketing tactics I have seen in so long. But on the other hand, she's doing... I think it's nine vinyl pressings for this album, <laughs> which if you, if you know, we talked about it last week, I believe, or the week before, she just made major waves in the news talking about how people who do multiple pressings for a vinyl is wasteful. She did combat it and say, when I released all those pressings for Happier Than Ever, it was all recycled material. So she wasn't, she was saying, she was like, I do it myself, but I do it in a sustainable way, which I will say definitely does change the game a little bit. It definitely takes the edge off there, but it's still like you can't come in with such a hot take and then do what you were just talking about. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Um, she put the pressings up and right after they went up, a statement at the top of her website popped up and it said, all vinyl is made using recyclable or recycled compounds and all packaging is made from recycled, papered, and boards. The ink used is raw plant-based and water-based dispersion varnish, and its leaves are 100% recycled and reusable. So she's definitely taking the steps. And like, I will say I'm very impressed that the vinyl pricing is pretty standard. It's like the $30 range for, which is typical for a vinyl, uh, which you would think something made with all of these sustainable products and things like that would be a lot more expensive but I guess maybe she's just fronting the money or maybe it's not as expensive whatever she's doing I, I understand why she's doing it and why she said what she said but it's definitely to like somebody who's not me who doesn't dig in and do research like it definitely looks a little shady and a little like hypocritical I guess I I'm not saying it's hypocritical I'm just like doing this podcast and like being somebody who is so invested in pop culture and music and like what everyone's doing like I do take the time to read more and like take the extra time. But like somebody surface level who last week saw the headline about Billie Eilish dragging people for vinyls. And then this week releases, I think it was again, like nine pressings of a vinyl, like to a surface level fan, they're going to be like, didn't you, didn't you just it's like the scarecrow and the Wizard of Oz, like some people go both ways, like very hypocritical. But again, not everybody is as in depth as I am. So I understand that it is not normal to just be like, oh yeah, well, this is why it is. So regardless, new Billy album on the horizon because what pop star isn't releasing an album this year? It's insane. I am like, oh, so, so overwhelmed in the best way though. <laughs> Moving on some other music news, but no releases, thank God, because I think we're good to pump the brakes for a bit. <laughs> um, Beyonce did have a number one album with Cowboy Carter. And if you're watching the video, I'm dancing because when doesn't she have a number one? She has, in fact, become the first woman in history to have all eight of her first studio albums hit number one. So every single studio album she has ever released as a solo artist has hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100, which is so crazy. Did she get a stepping stone with Destiny's Child? Of course she did. But for your debut album to go number one, it is such a risk to leave a group and then release new music. For that, for Danger Teen Love to go number one, and then every project after that to continue to hit number one for all of these years, she released her first album in 2003. It is 2024. That is 21 years later, and she is still hitting number one with every single studio album she releases. Now that doesn't include Homecoming, it doesn't include um, The Gift, it doesn't include the Carter album, Everything is Love. These are just her solo albums. So of course she has had projects that haven't hit number one, but her individual bodies of work, her eight studio albums, not a soundtrack, not a collab, not a live album, all hitting number one. I mean, she said it herself, I'm that girl. It's just, she's in her own game. It's insane. Um, she also has become the first Black woman in history to score a number one on the country album chart. And she has caused Levi's to see a 20% increase in their stock since the album came out. 
because of the Post Malone collab Levi's jeans. I mean, you want to talk about impact. It is so, so impressive. Just this, I love to see, like, things in the world outside of music, like, get a shift because of a release. Like, it's, and she's not the first one, of course. Like, I'm sure something with Ariana, like, with Seven Rings or Thank You Next. Like, I'm sure there was some shift there with, like, maybe Tiffany rings, I don't know, or I wouldn't, I, I'm, I'm curious if, like, Red Lobster saw an increase in revenue when she released, uh, Formation, like, there's definitely, it's cool to see, like, how chronically online and dedicated fans can be when their fave mentions something in a song, and how, like, their stock or their revenue can go up, so just a fun little fact I needed to throw in, because, like, I obviously can't stop talking about Beyonce, <laughs> um, some other, sprinkles of music news but nothing really confirmed ariana grande teases that there is more to come for the eternal sunshine era which i am so here for that album has not come off repeat like i have literally been shifting from cowboy carter eternal sunshine chaperone like it has literally been like that's my rotation and she said i cannot wait for everything that is yet to come to come with the eternal sunshine cycle that has only just begun and it may never end which I am, I, ugh, I, I love the album. I, if you didn't listen to the episode when the album came out, well, but that had to be what, like a month ago? So probably like four episodes ago. I think it's called Ariana Grande, You Will Always Be Famous. I was just gushing about the album and I'm so obsessed. It is such a good album. So the fact that there's potentially more to come, I am seated, I am sat, my seatbelt is on and I'm ready for the ride because I cannot get enough of that album and I just can't get enough of Ariana Grande I just everything she does I'm eating it up did you guys see that video of her leaving spam a lot with Ethan the other day we don't see them like leaving places together a lot so the fact that they were together and like holding hands walking down the street I was like ooh, she's ready to you know they're going more public so fun little fun little video we got to see of them this weekend which we don't get a lot um, somebody else that we don't get a lot from and, you know, we don't get to see too often, Rihanna. She is on the cover of Interview Magazine for their spring 2024 cover and she looks out of control. When doesn't she? But, like, she just continues to just, like, push things, like, their limits and just do new things. Like, she is not afraid to experiment with a look or with, like, a photo shoot idea. Like, I just love it. The cover is so good. My favorite of the photo shoot, if you haven't seen, this is genius, whoever thought of this. They did, they took a photo of her and she's topless and then they printed out the photo and put a pen over her titties. So it was like covering it and censoring it. But like, then they took a photo of the pen over the photo. Like, you know, no, it kind of just like, it took the digital art, printed it, put it into real life and then put something over it to then take another photo of it. I don't know. It was just a cool concept. And I, I think of these things, I like to think of like, what goes on behind the scenes and things like that but the whole photo shoot was gorgeous and of course she gave an interview for interview magazine with it and my two takeaways first and foremost this girl knows her bravo it is so impressive the way she knows every single thing about these bravo celebrities and she is able to give such like a full well-rounded just like answer to any question for any franchise that comes her way. She, uh, she was talking about Kyle Richards. She was talking about Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And what really stuck out to me is the interviewer asked, do you think Monica Garcia should have been fired for what happened? So if you didn't watch uh, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City last season, we found out that the new cast member Monica was running a drama page, Reality Montees, and that page pretty much just like leaked all this information mainly about Jen Shaw but all the girls were really affected and she has since been fired from the show they all said they wouldn't film with her so obviously they had no other choice and Rihanna said if Tom Sandoval can come back why can't Monica I was like oh <laughs> one thing about Rihanna she loves a messy bitch like she is here for someone to just like stir the pot and I was laughing so hard when I read that because like it is kind of true Tom Sandoval, if you don't know, from uh, Vanderpump Rules, he cheated on his, like, long time, I don't know if they were engaged or girlfriend, I don't watch Vanderpump Rules, but I feel like Scandoval was everywhere, like, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing about it or seeing it, and he cheated on her long time girlfriend slash fiance, again, I don't watch the show, I'm not sure, with her best friend, and he is now back on the show, so she's like, if he can do that, why can't somebody running essentially a fan account be back on the show, but I, I, yeah, I'm not the producer, but Rihanna speaks and I feel like maybe you should jump a little bit. Like maybe you should listen to Miss Riri because 
that could be interesting. Uh, the interviewer also went on to comment on her earring and said that she loved it. And he, she said that uh, ASAP Rocky got it for her and said that his style is so good that sometimes she looked bum as shit next to him, which I'm like, Rihanna thinking that she looks like a bum in any aspect ever. She could walk outside in like triple XL sweatpants and a stained hoodie and look better than I do when I'm dressed to the nines for a wedding. Like she can't look bum as shit. So the fact that she thinks that she does, I'm like, girl, you got to wrap that up ASAP Rocky. Cause like that's, it just, it's not it. But I, their relationship is funny. We don't get too, we, I mean, we see them together and obviously they do like their pictures and things like that, but like we don't hear from them a lot. Rihanna is very private. So is he like, they aren't doing too much. So just getting any tidbits of them and like a look into their relationship. I feel like they really are like, the definition of like dating your best friend from what I can like gather from the pieces that we've gotten. So any little tidbits about them and their relationship, I just always love to soak up because there's not as much of it as we do with other celebrities. So I just thought that was a fun little thing to talk about. Definitely go check out the photos. They were stunning. I love the direction. So much fun. I love Interview Magazine. They always do such fun photo shoots. They're always kind of like pushing the limits, going against the grain and just doing really fun different experimental things so they're definitely always one to look out for when i saw that rihanna was on the cover i sent it to thomas and i was like oh my fucking god like this is huge shifting gears a little bit some other relationship news um and kind of piggybacking off of something that we talked about last week my queen my girl gypsy rose so last week we discussed how her and her husband ryan have split after three months and they are no or three months after, after being out of prison they are separated they are split that news broke. The next day, she was spotted <laughs> with her ex-boyfriend, ex-fiance actually, Ken Urker. Now, if you're wondering when she had time to have another ex, she, before Ryan, there was another pen pal that was writing to her and they got engaged while she was in prison. So Gypsy Rose literally had two men while she was in jail. Like, oh, this girl, I don't know what spells she casts or like what magic she does she's she's one thing about her she's gonna have a man gypsy rose is going to stay in a relationship well maybe not in the same relationship but she's gonna she's gonna have a man so just like a few days after her divorce is announced she is spotted with her ex getting matching tattoos like what is what I, I don't know. I don't know if they're together. I don't know if they were just like rekindling, becoming friends, whatever it was. And we also found out that she was getting a nose job and she has gotten the nose job. She is ready for a hot gypsy summer, like hot girl summer out, hot gypsy summer. And this girl is ready. She has not been outside in years. She is about to tear up this summer. I fear she is going into like Jersey Shore style going out like she is going to be outside she's gonna have a man she has a new nose she has a new tattoo like this girl is going out on the town and good for her you know what i mean she yeah she orchestrated her mom's death yeah she rekindled with her ex the day after she called off her divorce but like the girl has never had any sense of a normal aspect in her life let's let her live her life do her thing like who cares? I feel like with her, it's like, she gets a pass. We're all good. Something I did want to mention and like that I am a little like uh, about this ex that she is now being seen with broke up with her after the Hulu show, The Act, came out because it was too much for him, which like, A, she didn't know the show. It's like, she didn't approve the show. She didn't write the show. It was a show about her life, which it, if you haven't seen The Act, it pretty much follows like very closely scene by scene to what happened like what we know that happened especially from like the documentaries and the interviews like it's very well done and they stick to the details pretty close so at, by the time the act had come out we had known her whole story there was mommy dead and dearest there was the dr phil interview like it was nothing new for him to learn but he broke up with her once the act came out because it was too much for him to handle i just feel like that's weird i don't know again i'm no relationship coach i'm her dating this man doesn't mean much to me. Like, it's not, it's not making or breaking my day. It's not, you know, the biggest thing. But I'm just like, that just seems a little odd. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Her ex-husband, Ryan, did post a TikTok speaking out about it. To be completely honest, I scrolled past it. I was like, just, just, just go. Your time is up. Gypsy's done with you. She threw you to the curb. You're lucky she didn't kill you. You're lucky she didn't, you know, <laughs> Dee Dee Blanchard you. But... <laughs> 
that's so bad but whatever that being said <laughs> gypsy rose is going to be outside this summer hot gypsy summer get ready she got a new nose a new man some new ink she's about to live her life up i hope you know what i want i want her to go out with like snooki snooki jwow can you guys get in touch with gypsy rose and like take her out on the town take her out go party actually no snooki dina need to have her out for a dirty stay out night can you imagine gypsy rose snooki and dina having a dirty stay out night oh i'm obsessed i need this to happen if, if you have any connection to the dirty shirt girls to any of them have your people call my people. Let's chat. Let's get this. Let's get this arranged. Because like, imagine Gypsy on a dirty stay out night with Nicole and Dina. I think I'm onto something. I think I'm. I think I'm really putting some pieces together for like fantastic reality TV. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see what I can do. <laughs> um, some other TV news. I really crack myself up. Like I. I've always said. <laughs> going on a little tangent I've always said in my life like I really do laugh at all my own jokes and I am my biggest fan like I literally think I'm the funniest person I've ever met in my life like I genuinely maybe that sounds conceited and like saying it on the podcast now I maybe they're gonna be like turned off but like good I this it's the truth I think I am the funniest person in the world <laughs> I, if you watch you if you listen or watch the podcast you know like I literally laugh so often at things that I say and I think when I was, let's get a little too pop to handle history. So when I was originally planning this podcast, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it like with a co-host or solo, but I was like, realistically, I, I narrate in my head. This is going to make people give me like in a psych ward, but I narrate in my head as if I'm like on a TV show or vlogging all the time. So like I have self-commentary going 24 seven. It's probably some like mental illness. I don't know, but I was like, no, I can do this by myself because I talk to myself in my head all day, all the time, like, and I laugh at myself constantly. So I'm like, I can just do this solo, maybe down the road one day I'll have a co-host, but for now it's just me. But like, I genuinely do laugh at 90% of the things that I say, which I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm like full of myself in that sense, but it's gotten me this far. So let's, <laughs> let's keep it pushing. Um, enough about me, right? Moving on, Drag Race. This was... I, I going into this episode, I really wasn't sure what the outcome was going to be. I wasn't sure if it was going to be all four of them get pushed through top three, like what was going to happen. Um, and spoiler, we do have a top three, but let's go through the episode first. So it's a new day in the workroom and they are, Rue comes in and they are proposed with the challenge of, or the mini challenge rather, lip syncing underwater to Rue's song and I am just like just much like the traders where do they come up with these things like do, I mean granted on Drag Race like season five they were the first day in the workroom they were like all right go jump in a dunk tank and then pose and like I guess I shouldn't be that surprised that they're like making these girls like get waterboarded while they're lip syncing to RuPaul's music but I was like this is nuts like I don't know and then I couldn't help but think like while the girls were lip syncing and while they were had their head fully submerged in this water the other three girls and rue and the two pit crew members just stood there in silence and watched like i i would love to be a fly on the wall in the workroom at any time and just like on like when we're watching it on tv they have background music they're editing but like it's really just a giant set with up to 12 gay men in it at a time like I would love to be a fly on the wall and just like really see what goes down and like without the editing and like the music and the sound effects and cutting to the confessionals like to be a fly on the wall in the workroom for just one day it's kind of a bucket list thing for mine so if anybody can make that happen let me know so they do this mini challenge Safira ends up winning she continues to win everything on this season rightfully so like I'm fully on board with Sofia Cristal winning anything that she tries but she wins the mini challenge which pretty much just means she's able to lip sync underwater so like that's a fun party trick to have <laughs> um they then move on to find out that their challenge this week is to come up with a title and a cover for their memoir which they will then be going on a podcast with Matt Rogers from Las Culturitas to talk about it which I love the way Drag Race ties in people in like queer people of influence into the show they don't just get like 
the most popular podcaster or whatever. I mean, Matt Rogers is a very, very popular, successful podcaster. That is no tea to him. But like the fact that they make sure they always have a queer person somehow involved. I just really, I love that. And I appreciate any type of like queer visibility to any extent. Um, so they go ahead, they have to write their little memoirs. I don't know how much of the book they actually had to write because obviously they weren't writing a full book, but they definitely had decent pieces of this book that they had to write, like at least a few stories or things like that to be able to talk about it on the podcast because that really was like the main challenge that in the photo shoot so they do a photo shoot with Rue which really has to be so rewarding to be able to work I mean you're on RuPaul's show obviously you're working with her non-stop throughout the season but like to have a one-on-one -on -one time with Rue and you're in the top four you're she's like at the end of the day RuPaul is just like a genius marketing expert when you really boil it down she has been marketing herself non-stop her entire life and that's how she has gotten to host the biggest drag queen show in the world like she's just she has such a good eye and a mind for marketing so to get any insight from her i feel like is so beneficial um they do their photo shoot i mean you guys know i love nymphia she ate that photo shoot she looked so good i loved that she didn't do a yellow look i loved the shoes i loved the hair everything about her look was perfect i was obsessed i love safira's too but like the judges said they did not love q and plain and i have to agree i did not like their covers i didn't really like their looks for it it just seemed like you got this far to the top four and that's what you pick for your top four main challenge look i don't know it just seemed i just i don't know they they ran out of outfits they didn't pack enough but whatever it was I wasn't buying what they were selling and neither were the judges. Um, so we get to the main stage and the um, the theme this week is fans. And I honestly only liked Nymphia's. I don't know if that's controversial or a hot take. I loved Safira in the challenge doing the book and everything. And I loved her podcast episode. It was very touching. But as far as on the runway, I really only liked Nymphia's look. Everyone else, they weren't bad. But I was just like, eh. Like, especially top four, like we were at such a high caliber. Don't get me wrong, Safira's was really, really well constructed and it looked great. Again, I, I say it all the time. I'm not a drag queen, so like, I know that I can't do what they're doing. So like, do I have grounds to judge what they're saying? Not really, but I do it anyway. But I do it out of a way of just like, what I like kind of thing, you know what I mean? But that being said, yeah, I didn't, I wasn't like loving the other girls runways i just i thought that nymphia really brought it she looked great when doesn't she and my girl won again so we are now to give a little tally of everybody we have Sophia and plain tied with four wins nymphia with three and q with two not for long though <laughs> we then find out that plain jane and q are the bottom two this week and they end up obviously having to do a lip sync and plain jane does end up beating her now i do believe that like even if Q pulled out any stops or fun things for this lip sync and technically deserved to win, Q has double the amount of wind and is to the top three. It's not just like you're surviving another week. This is like to the grand finale. So they, they really had to kind of like, kind of like with Safira last week against Morphine, like they really come, like, you know, they couldn't, I mean, I guess they could have. That really would have gagged the girls if Plain Jane went home this week right before the finale when she's had really like a spotless track record like she has been killing it this season as much as i didn't like her as much as like rotted as i thought she was i was watching the pit stop and it was trixie and mohart and they were saying they were like to the fans who were like why don't you like her because she's mean they're there to compete for two hundred thousand dollars like you would be mean too and that kind of i was like you know what you have a good point like was plain jane a rotted bitch yes but she is there to compete with these girls like they said, it is not RuPaul's best friend race. And I kind of have to remind myself that more often. It's more, it's like, of course I want everybody to get along, be friends. But like, yeah, plain Jane was mean. But like, she's not there to be BFFs with everybody. Of course, you end up with this like really nice sisterhood with a lot of the girls. You end up making so many friends and like a drag family. And like, that's just like an added benefit. But when it really boils it down, you're there to win $200,000. Like you're there to win a crown. So Trixie and Mo saying that, I was like, you know what? They have a good point. So I am very happy to say that our top three is Nymphia, Safira, and Plain Jane. Nymphia and Safira have been two of my front runners since the beginning. You can go back and listen to the episodes when I started recapping the season. I have been rooting for them from the beginning. So I'm so happy to see that two of my favorite girls have made it at the finale. And congratulations to Plain Jane, of course, for making it because 
that's just huge. She had a spotless track record. Literally, this was the first time she was in the bottom the entire season, which is just, that's insane. That's so impressive. You know what I mean? So kudos to you. We have two more weeks of the finale. So next week is a Drag Race Lala Perusa where all the old girls are going to come back and lip sync against each other for a cash prize. And then the finale after that. So I'll debate if I want to cover it next week about the the lip sync episode is, I'm sure it's going to be good. I'm sh honestly, between like Morphine, Maya, Mirage, there's probably going to be some gaggy lip sync. So maybe we'll talk about just like my favorite lip sync. So I'm not going to do a full recap of every lip sync because there's a lot of bitches that we'll have to talk about. But we will recap the finale in a few weeks. I am so excited to see who takes home the crown. I'm really, really crossing my fingers, crossing my toes for Nympia. Again, if it's Safira, I will be over the moon happy. But we will see in two weeks. And that is the end of the episode. <laughs> but you guys know that is not the full end of the episode. We still have my final segment, which is my yes and my mess of the week. So if you're new here, every week I end the episode with my yes and my mess. My yes being something I'm loving. My mess being something I'm not loving. So let's start off with my yes. And I cannot get enough of Zendaya's press tour looks for the Challengers movie. She has been out and about doing press for her new movie, The Challengers, and she just, I mean, when doesn't she look insane? But these looks are so good. Of course, she is styled by La Roche. They are like a match made in heaven. The way that he styles her is so, I am just, his talent Actually, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know Laura Roach's pronoun. So let me just double check that. They are he, him. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Didn't want to, you know, cross any borders there. But yes, Laura Roach, uh, he just continues to dress this bitch. Not even, not even like to the 10s. This is like 15s. The one look that really just like sent it for me was a Lueve stilettos with the tennis balls on the heels. If you haven't seen these shoes, I literally gasped. I was like, huh, are you fucking kidding? If you don't get the reference, the mo the Challengers movie is a movie based on a tennis player. So the way that he was able, he said he wanted to, I had the quote, hang on. He said, I wanted it to be tennis, but make it fashion. And that he did. These press looks are so good. She is also in the cover of not only US Vogue, but also British Vogue. He styled both of the shoots. The shoots are insane. They just are a match made in heaven. She is so stunning. I love everything she does. And I, yeah, I just, I love her. She looks out of control all the time. And something that I love about Zendaya is the way that she really commits to her roles. Every press tour, they, I can't even imagine how long it takes them to put together the looks and just conceptualize what they're going to do. They really, they just do such a good job at like, taking whatever role she's in or like the concept or like you know theme of the movie and making it such high fashion it is so impressive and it is I want a coffee table book of all of the looks that Zendaya has had done by La Roche like I want a full like I will spend however much money on this book I don't care I want like a thick nice coffee table book with sketches with photos with notes with like where she wore it, why they picked it. I want it like I need it so bad. If there is one, I don't, I feel like I would know. I don't think that there is, but like if there is somebody let me know because I will buy it immediately. Um, but I don't think that there is one. I feel like I would know that because again, I follow Zendaya pretty closely and I also follow Law pretty closely. So I feel like I would know. But that being said, that is my yes of the week. Zendaya, you will always be famous. La Roach, I know you're retired, but just please never stop styling Zendaya because I eat it up every single time no crumbs left lick the plate clean it is everything to me <laughs> that is my yes which means it is time for my mess and my mess this week what is going on with morgan wallen i mean i don't like morgan wallen to begin with like i'm not disappointed because i genuinely don't like him he is just he's not a good person we all know why like he he's had so many issues where he has been like just just awful not a good person but this past week he First, he mentioned Taylor Swift and his show, not in like a negative way. He just said like, oh, I had the biggest show at this stadium, um, but I'm glad I got that title before Taylor Swift performed here. His crowd booed them, which just like shows how rotted his fans are, just like him. He did say, no, we're not going to boo Taylor. Like he did stand up for her. I'm not giving him credit. I'm not being like, oh, yay, he's a savior. Like, no, 
your fans are trash because you're trash. Uh, sorry if you're a Morgan Wallen fan listening to this. I'm just, uh, if you're listening to this and you like Morgan Wallen, you are not trash. Because I can imagine that somebody that I wait along with and like my podcast isn't. But just the masses, you know what I mean? Not everybody in that stadium was booing. Not everybody in that stadium is trash. But the masses, unfortunately, I'm sorry. It's true. But that is not the mess of the week. The mess is the fact that after that show, he went out in Nashville. I believe it was Nashville. Yeah. Yes, it was Nashville. Got very drunk and found out that his ex fiance question mark. I don't keep up with him, so I don't know. But his ex, who was recently engaged to somebody else and eloped and got married, he was so enraged by it that he threw a chair off of the roof of a Nashville bar and the chair landed six feet away from police officers, which is just like, karma is my boyfriend. Karma is a god. Karma is the chair that you threw off the rooftop. Like you, you got what you were asking for, dude. Like a relax, like throwing a chair off of the roof of a bar. Do you know how dangerous that is for anybody to do it? Like in no world is that okay to act like that. But when you are a unfortunately very successful country singer, like really the most successful male country singer besides like Luke Holmes right now of what I know, you guys know I don't really dive into male country music, but they are, I know they're big enough for me to even know their names in, in that sense. But like, he's huge. He's doing stadium tours. He, people love him. And for you to go to a bar as a public figure in a very country-esque place, after you just did a concert in that city, knowing your fans are probably around, like to throw up a chair off the bar because your ex is now married. Thank God she broke up with you or it ended because who knows? But she like, you clearly are a violent person and like should not be roaming around free will. It is just like, I don't know. It is, it is really, it's embarrassing. It's really embarrassing. And I just, I don't know, something about that man, he needs, he needs help. And I say that almost laughing in a way because there's been so many instances, but like, if there is some like more serious deep rooted shit, like I hope he gets the help that he needs, but also like control your fucking self. You're a grown ass man. You know what I mean? Like I have no sympathy for you. Watch, like just, just be a civil human being. Go to therapy. Do like, go to like a, an a, a axe throwing place. Do something else besides throwing a chair off the roof of a bar. I can't. <laughs> when I read this headline, I was like, is this like a April Fool's joke that got published a few, that got lost in like, you know, the PR didn't get published on time. So they were like, oh, let's just do it now. Like I genuinely was like, there's no way. But sure enough, he was in jail. I don't know if I doubt he's still in jail, but regardless, I, again, I don't care enough to look it up, but this was just like, I saw this and I was like, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding. I can't. And with that, that is the end of the episode. Thank you guys so much for listening to this week's episode of Two Pop to Handle. If you like what you heard, make sure you give it a five-star rating wherever you're listening, whether it's Spotify, Apple Music, iHeart Podcast, Amazon Podcast, Google Play. I'm available everywhere. Leave me a five-star rating. Leave me a review. Let me know what you're thinking. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you give us a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button leave a comment, all the YouTube things. And I say it every week, but if everybody listening to this episode sent this episode to one person, I would double in listeners. It's simple math. I appreciate everybody who is sending the episodes around. You guys are real ones. Continue sending it, continue sharing it. But that being said, if you are not following us on social media, make sure you are. We are at 2 pop to handle on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, you name it, I am there. You can also follow me on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram at Andrew Nucatola. Make sure you head over to my TikTok and go read the comments on my viral video right now because they are hilarious. The girls are mad and they should be. I don't really care. Stay mad. I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> and with that, I will catch you guys next week. I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend and I will catch you soon. Bye.